You have your own worship this morning. Acts, the 16th chapter, verses 16 <clears throat> and verse 17. <laughs> it's okay to give him praise. It's all right. We can take time and do everything else. This is sound man. Watch me here now. We can give him praise. We can, we can do all the other things in life, but when it comes to taking a little time to give when it comes a little bit of praise catch me sound catch me sound we need to give him what he is due so let's not have to do what we think prayer to be how about we be intimate with what praise is and that is you having a dialect with you and your father because he talks your language. He speaks your language. He, he don't talk in ebonics. He, he don't talk in the other. But he'll talk. And he'll talk with you. When you speak genuinely to him. You don't have to have all the right words. You don't have to know all the right scriptures. But I dare you to be genuine. And open up your And give him praise. For not what, but for who he is. You see, you've moved yourself now from the cockpit of the planes in praise to the wings of the plane in worship when you know how to give him a praise, not because you want something from him, but because he woke you up this morning and he didn't do nothing else except for wake you up. Come a little closer. And he didn't even know that. But he did. So when you can move out of that comfortable seat and stop worrying about who going to watch you and your wig going to shake and your new suit going to get wet and be able to praise him for who he is. Then we move. Acts, the 16th chapter, familiar passage of scripture. 16 and it reads it and it came to pass as we went to pray a soul possessed with a spirit of divination met us which brought master much gain by soothsaying the same followed Paul and us and cried saying these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. If I could take 20 minutes of your time this morning in your undivided attention and speak from the subject today, I'm tired of him messing with me. I I'm tired of you messing with me. I I'm tired of them messing with me from scripture we know that the devil has a plan he's up to something he's very active he is very persistent he is very thoughtful and he invests in the future as well as the present he has a team and they work together against the Lord and those who love Jesus. The devil is real, can I tell you today? And if you ever doubted that in the past, when you look at the condition of the world and the condition it's in right now, I'm sure your doubts have subsided. Uh, so what exactly does the devil want? Let me help a few of y'all this morning by telling you he's interested, he's interested in uh, ruining your life. You see, the devil wants uh, you to be distracted. It, it, it doesn't matter, watch this, what he distracts you with as long as he distracts your focus and your focus is not on God. So let's, let, let, let's, let's straight today. 
You see, his goal is to give you to now have a mindset that registers somewhere other than God first. You see, and that's a half of the battle. That's chipping on the stone. Uh, watch me today now. And then we have to understand, too, that he will not even always distract us with bad things at first. Uh, sometimes he will uh, present things to you that looks appeasing and they look good uh, and they have fine things that surround them, uh, but they aren't good for you. You see, uh, as we focus on that thing, he already knows that they same. You see, uh, the devil doesn't mind a slow erosion of your focus. The political season, the new cycle, a never-ending supply of streaming entertainment, kids' sports, the pursuit of degrees, or what it takes to consume enough of your time first from who God is in your life. Consume enough of your time where you miss your prayer hour this morning. And, and now, Kevin, you find yourself uh, going through the same thing again, and it's Tuesday, and you've missed it again. You, you find yourself now uh, missing worship service uh, uh, last Sunday because you didn't feel good. But, but now this Sunday, something came up uh, that's uh, important enough for me to miss worship service. So now I'm out of worship now two Sundays in a row. He, he keeps us then from even uh, calling the folk that we worship with and praise with because we're feeling guilty about missing and we didn't have a legitimate excuse. What lie am I going to tell my prayer partner or my friend? You see, he keeps us from a uh, people that uh, likes to praise. You see, when he gets involved and he gets in your ear, then he wants to distract you from the person that you get strength from, that that connection that you have with friends, uh, that, that'll give you a word of encouragement in your worst times. Not going to tell you what you want to hear, but it's going to tell you what you need to know. You see, he keeps you separated from the very thing that you're trying to get to and if you're not sub if you're not conscious of it then you will fall just fall into a place or a position that gives you now to be distracted you see the devil wants your family not only does he want your families destroyed but he wants to stop them from even starting before they be, be stopping before they even start he wants to prevent marriage by encouraging living together and degrading marriage to just a piece of paper. The devil is a liar. He, he wants uh, children aborted before they are born. And he, he wants us to view kids as burdens instead of blessings. You know, and, and then if the devil isn't able to destroy your marriage or your children, watch this. He wants to destroy marriage and hijack the minds and hearts of our children within the marriage. You see, uh, he will use subtleties like unmet and unspoken expectations, selfishness, uh, put pressure on the marriage with bad financial decisions by the parents. He will slip perversion into your kids' entertainment that you feel is not so bad. It's not bad enough for me to take it away. But it's the beginning of the molding of their hearts and their mind away from that instilled and core value of the things of God. It's a beginning. You see, the devil wants you to profess your faith with your mouth, but he wants your actions to contradict how you live as a believer. Nothing, hear me today, is more powerful than a sanctified hypocrite. Nothing is more powerful. You see, even a lost and dying world despises a hypocrite. So a person that tells folk uh, who he is in the Lord, but his lifestyle really tells you who he is. You, you see, the world even registers to that. You, you see, uh, uh, and if we're not careful, we'll be confessing our faith confidently, but the devil's goal is to try and break you down weak enough that you do not what you're professing his angle is to be a power for his plan if I distract you Leonis long enough to divert you and you don't know you on the wrong course you'll keep going until you realize something is wrong 
But at some point for some of us, we've gone down the road too far to turn back and go the other way. So it would seem. Now, he had you in the midst of trying to make a decision about do I keep traveling this road because I know I've got uh, this skill. I know I have that skill. So I'm going to go a little bit farther because I'm able to work myself out of this thing. I'm able now uh, to, 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 to get out of this and don't nobody know I'm in a dark place. I'm lost. But, 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 but now I've got myself in a position that not my prayer partner don't even know. Uh, my pastor don't even know. Uh, I don't even know really where I am. And I'm confused about what it is that I need to do. The devil, the devil wants you to be afraid. The devil loves fear. Riots in the street. Economic uncertainty. And breeding, uh, breeding ground for fear. Anxiety. Depression. And all other forms of human suffering. And he delights in them. When you turn on the media outlet, you become convinced at first and first hearing the world is falling apart. And you know what? I can see how you can register that because it's so easy to come to that conclusion. When we're afraid, we just don't, uh, we, we want to just drown it out. We want to cause those things that, uh, th those things that are causing us pain and fear. We want to numb the pain by just ignoring it. We're just, just asking for it to go away. Come closer. It's not going to just go away. It's not going to leave because you looked at it the right way with the wrong eye. It's not going to leave because you used uh, uh, the, the, the language that you thought that it talked. The devil is a lie. We have to use the right language. We have to speak to it. Fear can be crippling when we focus on fear and because the fear is what takes our energy, what takes our power. But when we can take fear and change the focus of fear into a mindset of winning, now I've just changed my trajectory. I know your situation has changed, but my speech has now changed. Now I have the capacity to speak to that thing that's causing me harm. And guess what? I'm genuine. I'm asking God to do what it is that he's promised my teaches me something has to move it, it don't have a choice it's got to move but many of us can't do that because fear has paralyzed us fear has given us the mindset that I can't make this move because I'm looking at the move behind that one you don't know what the move behind that one is for God you, you know what it looks like for you but you don't know what it looks like for God give God a chance you see, devil, the devil, he wants it all. He wants it all. He's, he's, he's greedy. He's selfish. Being the most powerful angel in the Lord's presence wasn't enough for him. He wanted to be God, and, and he will stop at nothing to divert, sidetrack, destroy every good thing that God wants to do for you and everything attached to you. He is relentless. He will not stop until he drains you of all the good energy, the positive energy, and deposits the negative, uh, the downtrodden, the beaten uh, into you. Uh, I, I pray that the people of God will just take a moment, gather themselves, stop walking around talking about what the Lord's going to do when you're not doing anything yourself. Stop, stop confessing something that has no power because you're saying it, but your heart is defeated and your mind is defeated. Well, what you've just said has no power. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't make it out of the room. It doesn't change anything because your faith behind it is not there. As I walk into the text this morning, I'm almost done. We walk into the text this morning, Paul and Silas heading out of the place of prayer. When they had first met Lydia, the first female Gentile to lead a house church in Europe. But one of the way, but on their way, they met a different kind of female. A, a young girl enslaved in two ways. Watch this. To her human master and even worse to the spirit that was enabling her to predict the future. The Greek word describing this has been long and dark. 
It is the word Pythias, uh, which sounds like the English word python, uh, the large snake that squeezes uh, the life out of its victims. That's precisely what the word means, snake. In, in the mythology of the ancient world, a python guarded the entrance of the oracle of Delphi, uh, that legendary fortune-telling figure. In, in other words, the poor girl lived in darkness of human and demonic slavery. She was bound two ways. She was bound, watch this, humanly and spiritually. She had nothing to fight with. No recourse. And she had no direction. She was there and was just possessed with everything but the Spirit of God. You, you see, the, the, the darkness. And, and church, as we go through our days, I want you to throw this one in free this morning. Don't be surprised by all the evil that you see around you because it's ever-present. You, you know, I, I know you raised Junior to be this way. But watch this. I, I, I know you can't figure out why Julie ha, ha, has now fallen off of the honor roll. Uh, it, it's, it's right there. It's right there. Uh, you spent uh, a little too much time, watch this, watch this, talking about how cute it was when you had the chance to correct the problem when you should have corrected the problem. You, you see, uh, you sacrificed cute for what was wrong, and now you're in the fight of your life with your child. You, you're in a fight now that you've got to use both arms, both feet, all of the mouth, all of your finances, everything that you got to try to turn around a situation, come a little closer, that you once had control over and authority in. You see, as we move about, I, I know it's, it's, it's tight, but it's right uh, this, this morning. You see, uh, now you are driving yourself crazy talking about and trying to figure out a solution to the problem that you unawaringly imposed on your very own child. And now it seems, hear me, irreversible. It seems irreversible. Uh, uh, it's not irreversible, let me tell you today. Uh, I've got hope for you. Uh, I've got word for you. It's not irreversible. But, but you have to take a, a stance and you have to take charge and correction of your child and you and tell the devil, I'm tired of you messing with me and my family. But it's, watch this, fascinating that, the, that, 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 that she tells the truth. Watch me now. I'm in the text uh, about Paul and his evangelism team. She tells the truth about this. Watch this. Uh, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Can I parenthetically pause right here and, and tell you, you don't have to look like church. You, you don't have to play church. You, you don't have to tell folk how many committees you own. Uh, you don't have to let them know that you're a deacon, a preacher, or any of that. Why? Because every foul and demonic spirit knows until, it's known unto every man beyond a shadow of a doubt who the mighty one is, who the strong one is, who is Alpha and Omega in your life. Uh, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. Remember now the spirit that she was in, but she recognized the spirit that they was in, right? He, they know she knew who he was in battle. She knows who the Lord was uh, in your life. She knows that the Lord is your strong tower, your refuge, your shield, and your buckler. When there is a presence of God, the Lord speaks. Everything has to surrender and obey. In the text, we hear Paul was troubled by her. Watch this. Perhaps because she followed them around day after day repeating her message. Perhaps uh, uh, because her words about the Most High God made it sound like Paul's God was one among many gods. Or, or perhaps Paul uh, uh, didn't like the fact that the message of the gospel was coming from the mouth of a girl who was totally gripped in darkness. Uh, you don't know just because they quote scripture don't mean they saved. Uh, whenever, uh, whatever the reason was for Paul's irritation, the result was good and bad, depending on whom you ask. The girl was delivered from that spirit by the authority of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And immediately she was released from that part of darkness that enslaved her. From that part. 
You see, there was still another part that existed. You see, church, can I just go ahead and tell you this morning? That there comes a time when you have to take the authority and you have to take the authority that you have already been given, uh, that you already have, and tell the enemy that I'm tired of you messing with me. Everything that she was saying about them, watch this, was true. Paul was spiritually grieved by her doing this. Paul knew the Jewish law forbade all magic, chanting, magical rites, and dealing with familiar spirits. Pull over for a minute. Paul knew something that some of us don't realize. Paul knew that associating with this spirit and this woman was bad for everything that he stood for when it came to the gospel. Paul realized that he couldn't play pity with the devil. He, he realized that he couldn't yoke up with them because uh, she's, she's innocent. No, no, no. Paul realized that he could have no dealing with this spirit, not the girl, but the spirit that had control of the girl. Paul understood that my word... My reputation was at stake. Paul, I'm sure that, that I've got to go from this place. And I don't want it to seem like me and her are BFFs because my word means something different than her word. She can say things and make magic stuff happen. I can tell you things and be a miracle. Paul had to make sure that he separated himself from magic and miracle. You do know there's a difference. You see, both of them have power. Uh, but one was a power of evil, and the other one was a power of good. Paul didn't want folk, church folk, to get that misunderstood. He wanted to make sure that he let everybody that was watching him and her know this is not who I am. This is not who I stand for. Uh, this is not my plight. The Jews who knew this girl and her family, her family spirit, would then begin to relate with Paul's spirits. You, you see, I know sometimes you think that, that, that it's, it's harmless to get involved in someone that has uh, a, a, a spiritual, uh, a demonic power. It, it's, 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 it's positive sometimes, but it's not if you're not in the right position yourself. See, if you're not spiritually strong enough, that's an, that's an alley that you ought not go down by yourself. I thought I'd throw that in. And, and he would project uh, the testimony that he had been bringing. Paul understood that his testimony counted for the people that was listening to him. You and I can't afford in this season for the testimony of Jesus Christ to be doubted when it comes out of our mind by our association. I'm not telling you to, not to have friends. Don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not telling you this. I'm not telling you that. But what I am telling you is, is that you have to come into spiritual wisdom about what it is that you're in control of. Paul understood there are some folk, watch this, that you have to disconnect from and dismiss from your parents because you don't want, what you don't want to happen is for people to mistake, I say it again, a miracle for a mistake of witchcraft. The Gentiles would think that Paul possessed the same power as the damsel and would believe that he has nothing different to offer them that they, which, had already had. It's amazing that you can sometimes, certain people, you can have a profession or a confession, and another person in that same environment can have a profession or a confession. It's amazing how those persons speaking to fight an oval over the truth. You see, everybody is looking for the truth in what you say. So you have to be careful that you don't put yourself in a light to where what you're saying could be mistaken for anything except for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, that's who Jesus Christ. Paul had to get it understood. This is who I am. This is my walk, and this is what I'm speaking. Don't get it tangled and twisted because you see this damn following behind me. Don't get it mixed up. Paul was not interested in Satan being his PR person. Paul wasn't interested in the enemy speaking for him. Paul knew who he was. Paul knew why he had come. Watch this. The church is always in great danger when we look, at, look to the world to help us promote activities of the church. Can I just preach it how I feel? 
that Satan tried to stop the ministry of Paul through great opposition. Having failed at that, watch me today, he's now seeking alignment with the ministry of Paul. I couldn't do anything. So let me look like I'm joining him. Let me look like we've got something in common. Because no, I can't match his power. So, so if, I, if I can fool you to look like me and him have conversation or relationship, now you will believe what it is that I have to say when I get you alone. Look like, look like. You see, be careful. Sometimes the enemy deceives you by often saying what is true about Jesus. What she said was true. But what she meant was untrue. Watch me now. Watch me. It's interesting to know from the biblical record in Jesus' ministry that people possessed with demonic spirits would often say true things about him. The demonic spirit would often speak about Jesus, the truth, because he knew who Jesus was, right? That was the spirit even knowing who Jesus was. Remember, she had a double problem. The spirit was speaking Jesus, but the human spirit was still tore up from the flow up. So the spirit uh, of domination, uh, demonic power was speaking, but her human spirit was still incarcerated, in jail, and lost. So she had no ground. She had made it look good, but she was still imprisoned within herself, still locked and bound in the mindset and in the principles what she always was. And he says, everybody, watch this, who has conversation with you don't mean they have the spirit like you. You see, uh, Paul finally turned and said to the spirit, Paul did not address the girl but the spirit that was controlling the girl. Paul recognized, watch this, that he was dealing with two different people. You see, I, I, I can't treat the physical you like the demon you. But I've got to be able to rec recognize the difference, and that is that it's two people that are dealing with in that child that seems to be going out of control, in, in that person that seems to be you can't get your hands around or won't nothing you say or do work. Remember, you're dealing with two different people. But you've got to understand, you've got to have not your human power or physical power, you've got to have spiritual power to deal with both of those people. You can't deal with them because I'm a preacher or I'm a deacon or on this board. You've got, to able, you've got to be able to deal with them through the faith in your relationship that has given you the strength and the power to be able to speak into a situation and things change. Be, be able to tell the enemy, you've got to flee right now. But I've got to understand that I get the, how, how I've got the power. I've got to understand that I have to stay intimate with the connection of that power. Uh, your car don't run all month without gas. You've got to put fuel in it. Your spiritual condition is no different. Every single day, you and I will be faced with some kind of challenge. Remember that you're not always dealing with the person. You've got to remember that you're dealing with the spirit of the person. And if you don't recognize you can't deal with it correctly. Notice Paul's first reaction wasn't, girl, you better leave me alone. Notice Paul's first reaction was, you too young, you better get from behind me. Notice what his reaction was. His reaction wasn't to play any games because this is not a game. Paul spoke to the very thing that knew who he was, that knew who he was. Your child knows who you are. Your husband knows who you are. Your parents know who you are. But you've got to speak to that in the life that you're living. Not one that you're talking about. Paul knew that was too much at stake. Paul couldn't afford for this to get tangled and twisted. He had to know not only how to deal with it, but he had to know when to deal with it and whom he was dealing with. This is one of Satan's ploys is to bring curious minds of adults and children up into the powers of darkness. I'm amazed at the silence of the church 
and in the church. That we're not standing and warning people against such dangers is real. People in your house, people at your job, people that you know are suffering each and every day. And you going to the church each and every day. Something's wrong. Paul understood that this faith that I have can't just be talked about. It has to be lived. And when you live the faith that you say that you have in Jesus Christ, then you will start to live the life of speaking into the situation. As believers, we should be the first to alert and alarm people of the demonic influence Satan has. And people have to understand that it's not a joke. It's real. That's why Paul said to the spirit, I I'm tired of you, paraphrasing, messing with me. Paul didn't say go away. Paul didn't say if I come back tomorrow, you're there. Paul addressed it right then and right there. Many of us walk around everything we know we need to address. That very thing that's in us, we walk past it and around it before we say something to it. We'll, 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 we'll go and say stuff like, uh, pray about it. The prayer is fine. Open your mouth. Speak with the authority of Jesus Christ. You have the authority to speak. And the Bible doesn't tell us that it might change. It says it shall change. That means that, that it's a pretense that says it's already done. As I close today, preacher, church, I'm tired of the enemy messing with me and my family. Don't y'all think that he don't mess with the pastor and his dough? The devil is a liar. But I thank God for this. I thank God for somewhat of redundancy. I, I, I thank God that, that, that I understand that uh, my, my, my action has to always not know what to do every time. But my first action has got to be, okay, Lord, give me instructions. Uh, Lord, tell me what to do about this one. Yeah, yeah, I could just drop down. You know what I did? I, I do. I, first, so pray. This one right here. He made me, me to do. He made me, me to put my clothes on and go to the place of the problem. So every time you come across a problem, you've got to remember that your first act has to be asking the one with the authority that gives you the authority. Speaking in the name of Jesus has authority to bring your life that's out of alignment back into alignment. I, I, I just stop by to tell somebody this morning, tell anybody this morning, uh, take your house back. Take your children back. Take your money back. Take your hope back. Take your mind back that the enemy thought he had confused about you believing who you know you are in Jesus Christ. Take your future back. Take everything back that's attached to you. Tell the enemy that I command you in the name of Jesus, obey them. Tell it, tell everything that you command right now. You have the authority. You have the power that causes the situations around you to look like you are defeated. You have to understand, I'm done, that you are powerful. You are equipped. And the enemy is no match for you. I'm done. In the text. Paul didn't pull out his switchblade. He didn't say, meet me here tomorrow at the same time and see what you get. He didn't say, I'm going to tell my big brother. I'm going to call my pastor. I'm going to call my friend. Paul, watch this, embraced what was already in him to fight with it ain't rocket science. Why would Jesus rapture heaven to do what you've got the power and the authority to do? When you're able 
to speak by your authority. By faith that I am who I am in Christ Jesus. I'm just an old electrician in the physical. But in my spirit man, I'm a charged man of God. And I still don't have no authority. I still have to ask whom I serve for the strength and the power that I already know I have. But you ever get to a point where that one right there, it took a little bit more. And you say, Lord, I need a double portion. I, I need a, a little bit of... Uh, I've got, watch this, I've got the right tool for him to deposit it in. It's not an open tomb. I've got relationship with him. I know him for myself. So he got something to work with now. He got something now to deposit into. And things that I didn't know I could do is turning around. And then he's so kind to give me to see manifestation of his blessings before my very eyes. You got to get tired. In your spirit, man. You're fighting a finished work. I'm a finished work. You're not looking for anything. You're not looking for tools to fight with. You already have them. Wait a minute. Not in and of itself, but you have them if you've given your life to Christ Jesus. It came with the whole package. He didn't leave nothing out. I promise you won't look for it and then realize it's not in your tool chest. He has already equipped you with it. But the first thing you've got to do is realize that I need him to be Lord and Savior of my life. Facebook family and friends, thank you for joining in live with us. We thank you that the word has gone forth today and our prayer here at the New Birth Church is something that we've said, something that we've done, something that you've heard has blessed you in a way that you will go to nbbcshreveport.org and allow us to introduce you to Christ Jesus. Would you go to nbbc.org, the nbbcshreveport.org and allow us to introduce you to Christ. If you go there, uh, there are steps there, prompts that will take you to salvation. Let us introduce you to Christ. If you're tired, let us help you introduce your, yourself to Christ Jesus. Thank you. Let me tell you, in sanctuary,